Our call to confession comes once again from Romans chapter 12, this time from verse 12. Let's hear our God's call to confession. God tells us, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Uh, As we confess our sins again from Romans 12, this morning I want to focus uh, on the middle command, be patient in tribulation. Uh, So first, tribulation does not mean apocalyptic destruction. Uh, The Greek word for tribulation means distress. It means suffering. Uh, Lasting difficulty is a good translation. Uh, Chronic pain is another. Uh, Actually, I think the word intense pressure is also a great way to translate this word. And that matters... That matters because if we read this command as being about incredibly dire situations involving matters of life and death and torture and giving up the faith, we're not going to apply this command to our lives the way that Jesus wants us to uh, because this command is actually not about extreme situations. It's about daily life. As Paul writes to the Roman church, he knows the incredible difficulty that comes from trying to build a community made up of very different people. He knows what it means to try and join together people with different languages, different worldviews, different cultures. He knows what it means to work toward repentance and reconciliation among groups of people who have historically suffered because of one another. Paul understands the intense pressure and difficulty that all of these things will create within the body of Christ. And with that intense pressure will come the temptation to be unkind, unmerciful, and impatient toward one another. He understands the way that these differences make people want to lash out in frustration, withdraw in disgust, or just give up in despair. Paul understands the difficulties and pressures associated with living with people who are not like you. And Paul knows that that pressure is not going to go anywhere. Uh, Not as long as Jesus is building up his church from every tribe, tongue, and nation. And not as long as change and growth and maturity still take time. And so what Paul says here is, Practice patience as you feel this tribulation, as you feel this pressure, as you feel this this difficulty. And patience, biblically speaking, means something like prayerfully enduring hardship without bitterness. In other words, Paul says, don't give up on the church. Instead, prayerfully love the church as best you can with Jesus. Try hard to be kind. Be patient in kindness. Try hard to be understanding. Be patient in understanding. Be patient in overlooking offenses time and again. Try hard to repent and forgive. Be patient as you endure the difficulties of living together as the family of faith. My friends, how often have we been impatient with each other? How often have we lashed out, withdrawn, or given up? How many times have we refused to overlook offenses or to forgive or to understand because this was just enough? How many times have we withheld the very patience that our Lord Jesus has shown to us? And that's why it's good for us to repent this morning. Not only so that our Lord Jesus can forgive us, but also so that he can transform us and work his patience into us so that as we continue our journey together, we can be patient as we endure the pressures and difficulties of difference so that we can live together the way that Jesus wants us to without all being the same person. And so let's do that first by confessing our sins together corporately, and then we'll have a time of silent prayer where we can confess our individual sins individually. Let's pray together. My God and my Creator, I confess that I have sinned against you and my neighbor by not waiting patiently in trials and suffering. Instead, I have been impatient, angry, harsh, unforgiving, selfish, proud, and rude. And then, Lord, I further sin against you 
by justifying my responses rather than hating them and repenting of them. Heavenly Father, in all this I was wrong. I am sorry for these and all my sins, and I plead the suffering and death of your beloved Son, Jesus, for my forgiveness. Through him, forgive me and renew my obedience, that I may love what you love, do what you command, and live a life of faithful trust, empowered by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus my Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus finds great uh, love and uh, finds great joy in declaring his love and his forgiveness to his people. And he does so this morning from Ephesians chapter 1. And so if you, beloved, if you are repenting of your sins and trusting in Christ by faith alone, uh, hear Jesus' word of pardon to you this morning. He says to you, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. Let's take this word into our hearts by confessing Isaiah 12, verse 2 together. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Amen. Beloved, you have nothing to hide. I am forgiven in Christ. And you have nothing to prove. I am righteous in Christ. And you have nothing to fear. I am loved in Christ. Amen. Let's stand together and sing in celebration. Uh, His mercy is more. Amen. You may be seated. And as our ushers come forward this morning for our offerings of thanks, praise, and trust, uh, we are going to give, as we always do in response to a word from Jesus this morning from uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, verses 